the exterior inspection, we're at the rear elevation. to the air conditioning unit and of course at some point cut and cut off the power supply but it can also make the unit live so it's very important that it's fixed. Here we have a clear out, so a clear out. We've got the power drop. Let's go and look at the front. We're at the front elevation. Now you can see here how dark the brickwork is. What's caused that is runoff. You've got a roof, a rake of the roof here, and a lot of water is going to come down into this area and then come running down this chimney. Really, what you should be is a diverter and a and some form of gutter up here. Probably it's difficult for a gutter because it's a rake, but certainly a diverter to keep the majority of the water away from the chimney. These chimneys while they're brick are uh, they're not waterproof and so any water hitting this over time will penetrate up here you can see there's corking and the corking's in poor condition and so are the um, the flashings roof inspection We're at the front elevation Oh, okay, there is a diverter. I mentioned earlier about need of diverter. The um, corking around the chimney here is in very bad condition. That really needs to be done. It will leak. And this diverter needs to be increased in size. It's not doing its job. I'm at the front elevation. We're looking at the upper roof. I would say the condition of the roof is average. There's a chimney, we have a chimney cap. And there is a spark arrestor, I can see the spark arrestor. This is a water heater. It's six years old, installed 2006, according to the note here. We have a damaged flue. You can see that it's collapsed here. Uh, that means it's actually going to spill fumes out this side.
you see the flue gases have been damaging it here so this water heater is actually dangerous it shouldn't be used now it's it's on um, but I'm not going to fiddle with it because of this dangerous condition I recommend that it's serviced by a plumber I can't see any signs of water penetration as I say the flu hood is badly installed and that, that could be uh, serious you get carbon monoxide as a byproduct of flue gases and of course they are deadly in the back of the cupboard here we've got the sheet rocks been torn away it's left open it shouldn't be like that the other side of that is the outside so this is going to get cold because of the insulation has been removed and then we've got the flue going up the chase we'll go upstairs in a minute see if we can find out where that chase goes Now, although this is a recent installation, it's 2006, it's been installed incorrectly. See here, you have a black tube here. You should have a drip leg here, just here. And what it does, it catches sediment and stops it getting into this controller. It can destroy this controller. That's the sediment can. So here we've got a flexible pipe. A flexible pipe is passed through this metal cabinetry and the cabinet can cut the pipe. This has got to be fixed. You do not want to move in here with this in this condition as it would, if it does cut, you can get leaking gas in an open environment or a closed environment, you could get a fire very rapidly. Now we can see here it's very dirty, it's got to be cleaned up. There's an igniter there where the the, bulb, the light is shining, the flashlight's shining. Um, these are the jets that will light up. Just see if we can light it. So we've turned the, the unit on. We're just going to wait and see whether or not it will ignite. We have a gas supply here. Incidentally, this pipe should have a uh, sediment trap on it, and it doesn't. All of this, of course, will be in your report. So we're now waiting for this igniter to start to glow. Once that's fully heated, the gas is turned on. You can see now it's starting to, to heat up. And you'll hear it click in a minute, and the gas will come through. Okay, this is a gas detector. We're going to see if we've got any products of combustion coming out of the flue. I'm just adjusting the sensitivity.
Okay, so that's good. We don't seem to have any sort of gases coming out. All I can tell you is there's gases or there's not gases. But it doesn't alter my opinion that this really does need to have uh, a plumber look at it to make sure it is actually safe. Um, at the moment, it looks very unsafe. The, uh, the stairs here should have a railing. It should be one on this side at least, um, or it could be this side. However, this side, the difference, the, the, the distance here is too great. Um, you could actually squeeze a small child through there. It shouldn't be greater than four inches. Um, what you could do is to add a, uh, a banister down, add a banister down here, and then put additional spindles in between to actually close that gap. But I think probably the most practical thing is to put a banister down this side here so that at least you've got something to grip as you come down the stairs. Likewise, the distance here is too small. You only really start to get worried if you have small children about because the distance here would allow a child to squeeze through and then of course it's quite a fall down there. We're in the attic. Now I can't go any further than the attic access because there's not enough space to get me up in here. But from this position I can see that there are holes in the fire barrier down here, up here. What that means is if there's a fire in another one of the apartments in this building it can spread rapidly from attic to attic. These should be fire sealed and they're not. There's also signs within here of water penetration up here. Uh, signs of water penetration in the past. Could have been old, it could have been fixed by now, but we don't know. Um, there are no, as far as I can determine, no soffit vents. It has upper attic ventilation, but without soffit vents it will not ventilate properly. It will be very, very hot up here and, uh, and not at all easy to, to cool. Here you can see we're looking at the uh, air conditioning ducting and you see the actual insulation has come apart. Uh, that's going to mean that the, uh, a lot of heat or a lot of cold is going to be lost in the summer. Now, in the summer, if that gets cold there and it's hot in this attic, it's going to sweat. And that's going to introduce moisture into the building and that can be very quickly followed by mold. So that has to be fixed. is very thin it's only about for three or four inches so it's going to introduce a lot it's going to be cold it's going to be cold in the winter it's going to be hot in the summer the roof decking has a radiant barrier but you know without good insulation with proper soffit vents this whole area is going to be hot it's going to be difficult to keep it and maintain the temperature and even if you do it's going to cost you a lot of money This is a piece of the attic insulation, I've removed it. Um, there was an attic, type of attic insulation that was used right up until the 80s, perhaps a little bit later, um, and it contained asbestos. Um, it had a trade name, it was called vermiculite. Um, I only know of it, I've never actually handled it, but I do know enough of it to say that it contains very fine fibres, uh, and some of those fibres can be asbestos because uh, it was intended to be a fire break as well as an insulator. Um, 
I would recommend that this uh, attic insulation is tested to see whether or not it does contain asbestos fibres given the age of the property and the condition of the fact that the, uh, the, the, the insulation. Is this insulation okay? Hopefully it will be and there will be no problem but you know it's well worth checking out. We've got a downpour and you can see now what is happening. The gutters are being um, overcome by the runoff. And the water is running down, hitting the roof below it and then coming off and hitting the brickwork here. It's been doing it for years. So almost certainly we're going to get water penetration there. Um, hopefully we'll find something on the infrared camera when this subsides a bit. Here you can see we've got really poor drainage here we have water being pulled right around the foundation in this area um, and that's because the downpipe empties in the incorrect position this is the compressor on the exterior we've got a heavy rainstorm coming through at the moment so i'm staying in the shelter of the, the port a um, number of issues the insulation on the coal pipes is in very poor condition and you can see that it's uh, it's almost gone, none of it's there, so that needs to be replaced. In addition, we have a, uh, a, a primary drain line that's draining into a sewer line. Um, I don't know whether that's a drain that's to the storm drain or whether it's a drain to the city sewer. sewer. There's no way that I can tell. fireplace you can see here we've got cracks in the ceramic that's got to be sealed fire sealed otherwise air could get in there now it doesn't have a functioning damper um, that really must be repaired you won't be able to use it without a functioning damper This is the, the board. You can see here we've got aluminium wiring. There's some copper that's been put in and the aluminium one's taken out. But there is still other aluminium wiring in here. You come around this side. These two large conductors are aluminium. Likewise these conductors here. Aluminium is a is a source uh, of fire hazards um, and as such I'm now going to recommend that you have this checked out by a certified electrician or at least a master or electrician we'll have a look at the the actual board to see whether it's heating up or not and we'll take one of the outlets out here and see if we can find aluminium in the circuitry here um, but aluminium is not good Yeah. Okay, well if anything changes, give me a call and I'll be home well as soon as I finish up. Okay, bye. Okay, we're, we're full sit in the, uh, oh, the, the, we are in the guest bathroom, and you can see the plug doesn't work.
here and it's loose in the wall. What that means is over a period of time, quite a short period of time, that could come loose and spring a leak. The, uh, the swap over, the, the, between shower and faucet, it's not working properly, it's actually leaking. here it's not working yeah that one's not working so that's in the guest uh, sorry the master of course it's not working this is gas check we've got gas leak in the house I think at least there's a strong smell of gas Well, it's got a bit of gas that's escaped. That's heating. That's okay. We don't have a gas 